Welcome to NFL World, where NFL starts and ends. I'm your host, Jacob. And this was an interesting trade that happened. The Kansas City Chiefs traded Legereus Need to the Tennessee Titans for a third round pick and swapped their seventh round picks for next year. The reason that was interesting to me was because. I thought they could get more. I really did. I thought Snead was the reason. Him and McDuffie were the reason they won that Super Bowl a year ago. And this year, I thought that if you lose LeJarrius Snead, you lose that team. Because now you're asking McDuffie to play against more physical wide receivers. Which he'd probably be okay with doing, but to have a guy like LeJerry Sneed on the other side made sense. Because you could lock down one side of the field. Now, that wasn't the only reason Sneed was traded. Sneed had, son- uh, had gotten franchise tagged, which was about $21 million. Sneed. Knew he wasn't going to play on that. Got traded. First of all, Snead did not ask to be traded. He said, if it happens, it happens. I don't care if I'm in Kansas City. I don't care where I am. I just care I want to play. And so, Snead gets traded to the Titans. Now, the Chiefs talked to the Colts. Didn't go where they wanted to go. They get the deal done with Tennessee. Then this morning, it's announced that Snead and the Tennessee Titans have agreed on a four-year contract. The four-year contract of $76.4 million deal, which includes $55 million in guarantees and $20 million in signing, becoming one of the highest paid corners in the game, and well-deserved. He, he's the reason... You are in the position you are in to win back-to-back Super Bowls. That was the reason. And I think it's the reason they Chief might not 3 P because of losing a player like Snead's caliber. It's already hard to win a Super Bowl. It's obviously hard to win back-to-back. To lose your best defensive player, at least in the secondary, Before you're going on a, th- before going for a three P, that's hard. And you knew they were gonna try and keep both, but it was him and Chris Jones. But obviously, Chris Jones is more valuable than Snead is, because they paid Chris jo- Chris Jones, and they just could not figure out how to do it with Snead. Snead, the Snead trade works for the. The Chiefs because it gives them 19 million in cap relief this year, so they can pay some other players. They can go and pay their draft class and do all that. Where before they would have had to make some decisions that they obviously did not want to make. Now moving on, the NFL Competition Committee has been meeting. The last couple days. One of the rules that passed. Was the NFL owners approved. A revised kickoff rule. For the 2024 season. This is a one rule trial basis. This is what. A one year trial basis. So under the new kickoff rule. The return, the kick and return teams will line up at the receiving team's 40-yard line and 35-yard line. The kickoff team at the 40, the return th- team at the 35. And not leave the ball, or not leave until the ball reaches the landing zone, which is ter- it has been termed. Touchbacks, the landing zone would be considered the 20-yard line. Or go to the goal. 
touchbacks. If the ball is kicked into the end zone, the receiving team gets it at the 30-yard line. If the ball hits the landing zone and rolls in, or hops in or whatever, they would get the ball at the 20. But if the ball does not reach the landing zone, it is treated like it's an out-of-bounds. Meaning, the offense would get the ball at the 40. Is it a little confusing? Absolutely. Is it necessary? Probably. Probably. The NFL is trying to fix a, a group, or uh, really a position, because the kicking game has almost become obsolete. The amount of touchbacks and then the fact that you could just wave at the 20, 30 yard, or the inside the 20 yard line and get the ball at the 25. That was, it made it obsolete. There was no kick returns. Now, there's at least some kick returns that can be done. And we'll get some creative, creative energy in our direction. Now, I'm not saying this is exactly going to work. I'm saying that it's going to, we're trying to take the right steps. Now, moving on into some other news, the Packers are signing former Vikings kicker Greg Joseph per his agent. Joseph's agent said, the Packers are signing my client Greg Joseph, who kicked for the Vikings for the past three years, holds the NFL record for game winners in a season with five, and has the record for the longest field goals, for the longest field goal, 61, and then the NFL. Or, has the Vikings record of the longest field goal in the NFL with 61. Led the NFL in touchbacks in 21. Now, and has has an opportunity with this team. It's strangely worded. It's a one-year deal worth about $1.295 million. So, not exactly the greatest deal, but it is a deal nonetheless. Moving on to what was um, an interesting conversation. Mike McCarthy had an interesting conversation with Adam Schefter yesterday. Schefter goes and says, McCarthy, what did you feel about the lack of moves that the Cowboys have made? To which he said, it doesn't bother me. It's okay. Which it's not okay. And then Jerry Jones went and said, the plan or that they could move Tyler Smith to tackle and get guard and get a center and do all this stuff. McCarthy says, contrary to what Jerry Jones says, the plan is for him to play guard. Now, I think here's the thing. If they don't get a tackle that they want, they'll move Tyler Smith to tackle full time. That's what they'll do. But because there's so many tackles in this class, I don't think they'll rush into it. It, it all depends on how the draft board falls. There's a lot of tackles. There is a lot of there's not a lot of centers, but there's quite a few guards. So it depends on how you work this. Again, it's it's all like just nonsense until the deal that actually gets done. Also news coming out of the NFL the source tells NFL on CBS that NFL plans to play another Christmas Day game in 2024. They plan
to hit to play on Christmas Day again in 2024, even though the holiday falls on a Wednesday. This is a reversal of the league's previous stance. Christmas Day games draw massive TV ratings. And a lot of players are not very, a lot of people are not very happy about this. One person wrote, You can't say you care about player safety if you're forcing teams to play three games in 11 days. And that's true. And it's very disheartening that you have to see that because, like, like I said, like you having teams that play on Christmas, you have three games in 11 days. Um, teams that have to play on Thanksgiving do a very similar thing. They play three games in 12 days. It's just not helpful for them at all. To do that is ridiculous. Also, the NFL has moved the trade deadline back a full week. So instead, it will be on Tuesday after week nine. So that is that part. But before we do that, we get into the bylaws. The approved rules in the summary. Uh, this was from Detroit. This amends Rule 15, Section 1, Article 1 to protect the club's ability to challenge a third time ruling before fo or following one successful challenge. Instead, you would have had to do two. Now you can do one. By the Competition Committee, amends Rule 14, Section 5, Article 2 to allow an enforcement of a major foul by the offense prior to change of possession in the situation where these fouls are by both teams. One of the fouls that or is becoming a foul is, like we've seen the horse collar tackle, the hip drop tackle. You can no longer land on, your, on the opposition's leg if you're tackling them. You can't do it. You'll get fined. You get penalized 15 year penalty. This was a unanimous decision from the owners. You cannot tackle them that way. 15 year penalty, automatic first down. Which the players are like, we don't want this. The NFLPA said, we don't want this, which the NFLPA doesn't do anything. But the fact that they went and said, we don't want this, tells me something. Uh, by the Competition Committee, which amends Rule 15, Section 3, Article 3, to include the roughing the path, a, a ruling of passing down by contact of out of bounds throwing the pass as a reviewable play. Basically saying, now we are going to review roughing the passer and intentional grounding because there's times that there's a player in the area. And what the review, we're not reviewing it. We're not showing it. And then there's times that we're doing roughing the passer and the guy does not get hit in the face. He gets hit in the shoulder, uh, grabbed here, right underneath his collar, but he's not getting hit in the face or the guy's like overselling it. Making it reviewable. I like that move. I think it was necessary. I know a lot of people said, we shouldn't make these plays reviewable. It makes the game too long. I understand that. But also, it can teach... You know, we got to keep these officials accountable. Yeah, I know. If the officials don't do a good job, though, and we see, okay, that was really obvious. Like, game between the Bills and the Eagles, or the game between the Cowboys and the Bills, 
where Josh Allen would just flop backwards. Oh, I got hit. Oh, I got hit in the head. Like, they're not going to allow that to happen, and that I'm excited for. Uh, by the Tech Competition Committee, Rule 15, Section 3, Article 9, to allow a replay to review, there is a clear and obvious visual evidence of the game clock expiring before the snap. Basically, if the game clock expires before the ball is snapped, kill the player. It's over. Expired before any snap, but I get any snap. Uh, another one from the competition committee amends rule 12, section 2, to eliminate potential dangerous tackle techniques. That's what we're talking about, the hip drop tackle. Competition committee for one year only, this is the kickoff rule, resemble a typical scrimmage play by aligning players on both teams closer together and restricting movement to reduce space and speed and to promote more returns permit the replay official automatically to review whether a free kick legally touched the ground or a receiving team player in the landing zone. So basically a fancy way of saying we are making sure we review these things. Because it's very necessary. And I want to make sure I can find it. Because I saw it. But it does, going back to the kick, to the, the idea of the special teams, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. But does it make sense to try and force the game to be a little more exciting, especially on kickoffs? Yes, it does. Because it forces... You're either going to kick the ball out of bounds on the touchback, or you're going to force them to kick the ball inside the 20. Either way, it works really well. But before we go, I want to make sure I have the last thing. Here we go. So this was from the approved resolutions. By Buffalo to make an injury reporting rule for players who do not travel with their clubs to games away from their home cities. Com completely fair. I think what they're arguing is if you are hurt, but you did not travel with their team, but they traveled independently, I think that's what they're arguing. It's very strangely worded, as most of these things are. Um, by Jacksonville, expand the 2023 preseason trial of providing specific Hawkeye feed in the coaches' booths for the 2024 preseason with full implementation in 2025, basically saying, we're trying to figure out, they did a really good job in the 2023 preseason, and officiating and Hawkeye rule, whatever they call it, and putting the feet in the coach's room, so they could actually figure out, hey, should I challenge, should I not challenge? In 2024, they had this idea with the preseason, with the whole plan is put it in the 2025 season, during the regular season. Now, back to the bylaws. By Detroit, amends article, let's see here, 17, section 1716, the Constitution of the Bylaws to provide clubs with unlimited number of designated to return transactions in the postseason. This is the idea of a couple years ago when you did the injured reserve list, 
how many people could you designate to return off your IR and it was unlimited as long as it was one time but it was unlimited to any player there was no limit now there's a limit now they're asking and it works we can bring any player back in the postseason I agree with that this is from Pittsburgh article amends article 16 of section 16.6 of the Constitution and bylaws to move the trade deadline to week nine. As we said, couldn't put it later, probably could put it closer to week 11. Or week 11, past week 11. That, to me, that would have made more sense. But anyway. Competition Committee amends Article 17, Section 17.16 to permit each club to place maximum of two players who are placed on applicable reserve list on the business day of the final roster to reduce to be designated to return such players will immediately count as to clubs total designations i think what they're arguing in this is you can put a maximum of two players per club on the Injured reserve list. So when you cut, you come down to your final cut day, you can only put two people on instead of however many you put on. I don't mind it. On the final, it says on the final day. So you could probably do it before, and it wouldn't be that much of a difference. And then finally. By the committee, Article 17, Section 17.3, to expand the standard elevation rules to permit clubs to evaluate or evaluation rules to permit clubs to evaluate a bona fide quarterback an unlimited number of times from its practice squad to an active list to be an emergency third quarterback. Basically, saying you can put this guy on the practice squad. And elevate him every game. Instead of him actually being on the roster and doesn't count. We can just put him on the practice squad and elevate him every game. And it won't count. So it's basically the same thing. Just not on the active roster. But for NFL World, I'm Jacob Hebert. Out.